why? Why don't you just eat the cake? It's a birthday party. Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of British vs. American. Today's topic is birthday party traditions and so on and so forth. Today's British guest is who? I'm Heather. Where are you from? I'm from Marlow. Lived in England my entire life. So, so you're proper British. Yeah. And of course, I I am the American person here in this video. I, I am both now, but grew up in New Jersey, so I think I can uh, attest different American birthday traditions. So Marlo, growing up there, pretty standard life, standard British life. Yeah. Living in Henley Light. Henley Light. <laughs> <laughs> Living in Low Wickham. <laughs> Bullying Marlo. I make these videos every Sunday. If you enjoy this type of content, subscribe and whatnot. But today's video is about birthday traditions and celebrations, because I've only recently, in the 10 years I've lived here, learned that in Britain, they do birthday parties so much more differently than growing up in the States. So Heather's going to be teaching me some weird stuff. So first off, the main reason I wanted to make this video was because I'd seen a post and I had to ask Heather about it because it, it just sounded unbelievable, which is in the UK, when you go to a traditional child's birthday party, you don't eat the birthday cake there. You take it away in a bloody napkin. Yeah. Why? Why don't you just eat the cake? It's a birthday party. Because I, I honestly don't know. I probably wouldn't do that with my kids, but you have just so much sugar there. So yeah. the, it's just like one of the other things, they just send it away with you. It's a nice little thing. You wrap so it if there's so can... much sugar there, why yeah. don't we eat the birthday cake for the birthday and then have the other bits take home? Like in a party favor bag? <laughs> no idea. No idea. I literally don't know. I mean, when I was a kid, my mum used to always serve the birthday cake because Good. she's Irish. Uh, um, <laughs> and so it was apparently a thing that was weird and other parents like, why do you do this? Because she- Why do you serve this cake? Yeah. I wanted to eat it later in my favorite satay. But I have this vivid memory of you'd go home with this white napkin or like whatever napkin yeah. it was wrapped around a birthday cake and always had the fondant icing. Yeah, just all of so the napkin. Victoria sponge, uh, so jam in the middle and icing on top. And it would just like bleed through the, the napkin and you'd get home you have to peel the napkin off the cake. Is Victoria Sponge a very popular birthday cake? Oh yeah, that's pro well, it's, that's if you so want- That's so like hardcore effort, isn't it? I don't think well, I've no. ever had a Victoria Sponge before moving here, by the way. Never in the US. It was always shop-bought, that's the thing. It was the traditional birthday cake shop-bought when I was a kid, because obviously mm. now they've got a lot more variety, but it was always a, a Victoria Sponge with jam in the center and then fondant icing on the top. And you'd have like themed ones for the theme, the, the whatever the birthday theme was. I was told, Depending on the venue that you throw your party, they might not allow you to eat things that you bring in. You have to buy their birthday cake. And if you bring in your own birthday cake, they're like, you can't eat this on the premises. And so you have to carry out your own birthday cake. And and that's one possible reason. Why? Bureaucracy. I don't know. Fair. I suppose like But in the US we don't have this problem. We just eat our cakes. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, that makes logical sense. Also, okay. do you guys rent out different venues? Like, I don't know, school hall? Is that, you guys <laughs> yeah. love using the school hall, right? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the age of the kid, because if you're a primary school kid, then you might as well just have a school hall or a random hall, and then kids run around and have party games and enjoy themselves. Whereas if you have an older kid, then yeah, send them somewhere else. Okay, that's interesting. School hall wouldn't restrict you from eating anything there, because the entire point of it is you rent out the hall, you bring all your food, you bring everything with you, and then you set it all up. I don't think I, as a kid, would ever have wanted to have a birthday party at my school. That wouldn't have been fun. But then again, no kidding, my seventh birthday was at a McDonald's, so I don't think you'd get cool. as American as I was. <laughs> it was in the basement of a McDonald's in Deptford, New Jersey, and nobody came. Oh, no. Not even my grandma. I just remember being like, cool, happy seventh birthday. Double cheeseburger. This isn't a happy meal at all. Oh. <laughs> As a kid in America, the dream. I never had one there because my family could not afford it, but other friends did, and it was so fun to go. Chuck E. Cheese, that was always the dream. Why Chuck E. Cheese? It's, it's where a kid can be a kid, Heather. Wait, so is Chuck E. Cheese a restaurant? <laughs> Every time you ask me about a random business in the US, I just go with the slogan like that's drilled into my brain. About the slogan? Yeah, where a kid can be a kid. Like we went to the supermarket the other day and I went, where's all the American yellow mustard? Like French's. And he went, what's French's? And I went, you know, smart. You got French's, <laughs> which is the, the like little jingle. Smile, you got French's. Ah. You're just- um, uh, Company man, that's me. Yeah. So it's basically half entertainment, half food, half fun, three halves. All right, so there's a giant like ball pit and yeah. tube you can climb through. And not just that, when you're done maybe getting too old for the ball pit and such, there's a giant arcade area with loads of games where you, you pretend you're like a firefighter and you have to fire the water at the burning building or maybe some pinball, ski ball, like a standard yeah. arcade. 
and all you get tickets and then you get to exchange the tickets for fun goods. So that sounds like a lot of fun. I was just imagining like a restaurant when you said Chuck E. Cheese, I thought- well, That's the food. whole like left half of the building. Okay. The right half is, imagine the Great Hall from Harry mm -hmm. Potter, right, from yeah. the Hogwarts. There's long tables. Imagine yeah. a Wagamama's with, with like less sadness. Yeah. And ev all these kids just sitting down, really thin pizzas, and then all of a sudden the curtains pull and there's some animatronic rat singing a song to you going, Welcome to Chuck E. Cheese. And there's like a bird animatronic playing a saxophone. That just sounds like trauma. Like yeah. part of trauma. Just what, like... it's cool. <laughs> so that's the American dream. But you guys go for school hall. Well, I mean, we do have something similar, but not quite that level. We would have parties at soft play areas or you'd have kind of, if you're soft older, you'd have like um, laser theme. Laser, laser tag. Laser that's tag. a dream that's, party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I have heard recently uh, that every party that uh, as a kid is themed like fully so yeah well i mean you would have a theme of the day so you'd have kind of the invites would be a particular theme like as you said dinosaurs or if you're a girl often it would be prince i had so many princess parties when i was younger literally just an excuse to dress up in pretty princess dresses oh yeah is, is it fancy dress you always dress not always but when you're a kid you kind of just want to i mean and do the guests dress up yeah, everyone, all the all the kids dress up. You all dress up as whatever it is. My colleague was saying it's literally just one of PJ, PJ Masks, something like that. It's like... Kick the PJ? No, it's like a TV show and you dress up as the characters and... But so all the kids that are going to the party dress up in the different costumes? Yeah, yeah. That sounds really extra. Well, I mean, like... You and don't, fun. Isn't... I'm going to say it sounds fun. <laughs> I just didn't like costumes. It doesn't always have to be like a specific costume. Sometimes it's kind of like just dress up as, well, as like as a princess, they put on a pretty dress or as like, I suppose if you have a knight or something medieval. Um, it's just more standard kind of like dinosaurs. I don't know, dress up as a dinosaur. Yeah, I feel like we would definitely have themed parties in the States, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't necessarily be as... Like, I feel like I'd have a themed birthday cake, maybe. Yeah. Just the cake or the napkins. Uh, maybe a number seven, maybe mm -hmm. number eight. But I, I don't really remember having too much of that. But then again, I didn't... Uh, our family did not have a lot of money, so it wasn't like we were going to be like, let's buy the school hall and light it up with laser dinosaurs or something. Horizon Zero Dawn themed. So what are the games that you would play traditionally in the UK for birthday parties for kids? So real kids parties, primary school, you'd real have... Real kids. Like, none of these fake these kids. None of the fake kids. Um, so you'd have things like Pass the Parcel. Um, Ask the Parcel. Pass the Parcel. Pass the Parcel. Pass the Parcel. Parcel tongue. So what? If, explain for the people what past the parcel is. So you take a, a gift of some sort and you wrap it up. And then yes. you take a packet of sweets, put it on top and then wrap that up. When you say sweets, can it be, is it, can you, does it have to be roses? Can it be heroes? Is it? Normally it's like Harry Potter. You have a sweet, yes, continue. Yeah, and it's wrapped up in another layer. And then you just keep on doing that. Lots of different sweets, one on top of the other wrapped up until you have kind of a big package and you have more sweets wrapped in than you have kids in the party. And you get them to sit in a circle and then you play music and they start passing the parcel around and then they'll stop music and then one kid will get to tear a layer off and so they get a packet of sweets and they're all happy they've got sweets. And that will go on until everyone's had a packet of sweets. Normally they'll try and like rig the game a little bit so the parents will be watching kind of go, okay, we're gonna pause it in three, two, one, pause. So the last kid gets their packet of sweets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then the very last one, they'll make a big show of, well, I'm gonna cover my eyes now and then turn around and make sure that they randomly blindly stop it. So the last kid gets the gets a toy. Gift on my birthday. Yes. Why is some, I'm sorry, pass the parcel to the birthday boy, please. Why is, do other people get gifts? Well, it's it's a game. It's like the, the prize of the, the game. game. Okay. It's my birthday. <laughs> I would like to win. <laughs> do you have pin the tail on the donkey though? Yeah, that was quite a common one actually. I it? really enjoyed that as a kid. I don't know why it was so basic, but I like the blindfolding element of being like, oh, surprise. Although we never had pins. Cause that was a danger. And so we'd have like blue tack or something like that. And like, well, if it was shit. pins, then you have to be very careful. Or something tack like that. the tail on the donkey. Yeah, pretty much. Did you guys have pinatas? They're huge in like Mexican culture. And so yeah. therefore also a lot of American culture. I had a massive issue with one of my pinatas because I had a pinata for a birthday party. Yeah. And it was a modern one. So um, it was designed to not be hit open. So you had strings coming out of the base. And so you all grabbed a string and then you pulled. And then the person that got the string that was attached to the trap door opened the pinata. And so we all got our sweets and everyone was like, wasn't That's really pretty lame though, no. You want to whack things. Yeah, um, and so tied it up and just whacked until it died. But um, oh. So sleeping lions? No, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Uh, it's basically just a trick to get the kids to quieten down, calm down and not be really loud, etc. You'd get them all to lie down and pretend to be asleep. 
at a birthday party where you're supposed to be celebrating my birthday. Yeah, it's one of those adult (laughs) tricks where you're just there like, okay, they're getting a bit loud, a bit too excited. Let's get them kind of quiet and down. We're playing Sleeping Lions. And so they will all lie down and have someone that's the hunter, I suppose. And they'd go around trying to get people to move or show that they're not actually asleep. But they couldn't touch the people. So they had to like make jokes at them to make them like laugh and um, and move or like talk to them until they moved or something like that. And then if you move, you become a hunter and you carry on. Trying to get other people to move. Yeah, exactly. And so you're trying to um, wake people up effectively. I mean, I remember a different version of this game when I was younger. I played it so that the very last person you'd gather around and scream at them. But apparently that's not the usual method of doing this game. Yeah, screaming was... lions. <laughs> screaming lions. <laughs> Definitely a different one. Musical statues. Musical. So is musical statues just musical chairs? Because we did a lot of musical oh, chairs. No, no, no we had musical chairs too. So musical statues is a dancing game. So you dance whilst the music is on and then you turn the music off and you freeze. And so you've got to make certain you're stationary when the music stops. So like you can't do like really massive dance moves because if you're midway through doing the worm, you've got to freeze. Like, you know, it's I don't think well. there's a child that's going to be attempting to do the worm. <laughs> so I've looked this up recently. I find it strange that Heather and a lot of people in the UK that I know are really religiously into greetings cards where I just go, it's a waste of paper. I'd rather say it to you in person. I don't want to get a card. But I recently found out that greetings cards are absolutely insanely popular in the UK, and they sell more greetings cards here than any other country at all, including the US, per capita. That makes sense to me. You guys just greeting cards. So like greetings cards, even for birthdays. Birthdays, I think are 65% of all greetings cards in the UK as well. Yeah, I mean, well, especially with kids, if you have a kid's party, you go with a present and with a birthday card. And that's kind of the- The standard. Standard, yeah. And then if you're not near someone, you send them a greetings card in the mail. And grandparents, especially when I was growing up, I'd always have to send my grandparents- yeah, a card for my birthday for my grandparents. Well, yeah, but you'd send it to them as well. So that they have something. From you, especially if you live far birthday. away from them. Like, not, not birth noon, on their birthday. <laughs> You'd send them birth to come. Oh, I that. never, no, no, no. Happy birthday, Grandma. What, yeah. do I just give her the $5 back? <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford that. When your grandma gives you $5, you're like, holy sh! I'm in the top 1% all of a sudden. I've got all the money, can afford, what, like 10 sweets at least? <laughs> Well, back then, for 20. Then, <laughs> I would save it, not spend it, and then eventually have enough for Mario Party 2. I have also recently learned that rather than in the in the US, when it's your birthday and you have a job, you're an adult now, just shut the, f- nobody cares. It's your birthday, but you can, you know, keep it to yourself. Shut up. But it's your birthday. In the UK, people bring a birthday cake to yeah. work to be like, hey guys, I want you to celebrate me at work. I find that so, themselves. It's less that we want you to celebrate us. It's more like a an act of service. Like sure. here, Here's I've an act made of service. you some, or brought you some cake. Celebrate me. <laughs> I don't know. I find this is something that we can debate in the comments. But I find if someone brings a cake to work to be like, it's my birthday. Well, it's, I'm like, someone has to do that for you. It's not like a birthday cake. They don't bring a full birthday cake and like stick candles in it and like go, we're gonna st- uh, sit around and sing happy birthday to me or something like that. It's like, I know you bring in some brownies or you bring in uh, some cookies or something or just some cupcakes. Do you not find it a little sad? You're like, guys, this is, it's my birthday today. Just so you know, um, that's why I got this cake. Yeah, I mean, it's just, Tradition is one of those I things not everyone does. Just it. not say anything about it, and then yeah. someone would find out that it was my birthday by being looking through like, like list of employee yeah. birthdays. Well, I mean, in smaller companies, they will the company will sometimes bring in cake um, mm-hmm. for an employee's birthday. But if you have a larger company, that's just not possible. So people bring in cake for their own birthdays. It's like a everyone else brings in cake for their birthday. Mm-hmm. Did no one else bring in cake for their own birthdays at your in company? In the UK, a couple at yeah. different jobs, yes. Yeah, so it, it's just because people expect it, they expect to be aware of when your birthday is and you ha- you bring in cake to kind of let them know, not necessarily on the day itself, but just like around the time, oh yeah, I had a birthday recently, have some cake. And so it's weird almost to have the opposite and to not let people celebrate your birthday and to keep it kind of like quiet. You guys blow out the candles. Do you let the birthday boy blow out all the candles? Yeah. Okay, or birthday girl, or yeah, birthday person. Unless they have siblings around the same age and then you get the fight. Why? It's not their birthday unless they're twins. It's not their birthday, no. But I mean, the amount of times that you have siblings trying to blow out the kids' candles. Really? Yeah. Cause... Take away the wishes. <laughs> to make the wish, if you blow them all out in one blow. Only if you blow them out in one blow. You have to blow all the candles out in one blow or your wish is not granted. That's how it works. Really? I'd literally, no. I've, it's always been you. Not None of your wishes come true. <laughs> You're like, like <gasps> trained to be a swimmer in order to get the wishes. There needs to be so much COVID phlegm on that cake from your blow. <laughs> Something I also learned very recently that somehow I did not know this. The queen has two birthdays. Yeah. One 
Well, she's dead. So <laughs> does the king have two birthdays now? <laughs> the king will probably have, well, it depends on when the birthday is, I suppose, because the reason that the queen had two birthdays was because I think her birthday was in winter. So that was her private birthday that she celebrated with her family. And then in the summer, and she'd have- Normal people did that. Well, I mean, it so was like- Like someone's birthday's in December, they get upset because everyone just cares about Christmas. So they're like, yeah. July, celebrate my birthday. Come on out for me half birthday. People do that. If they have birthdays around Christmas, they literally no, will have is... parties in the summer because it doesn't like cross over, cross over then. This you know? is not allowed. If you want to have a summer birthday, fly to Australia or something. I, I decree you cannot, unless you're the queen or the king, I guess you get to do that type of thing. I still find it a bit weird though. Summer birthdays are the best because you don't have to worry about going to school. Whereas in the UK, you do. Depends on when, but yeah, it's not quite as. No, you. Oh, I can't imagine going to school during my birthday in summer. No, no me gusta. Supposedly, a big reason why you guys don't have the whole eat the cake there is because not allergies. Because venues are really, really against if someone has a nut allergy and they're being nut involved in mm -hmm. the cake. Whereas in the US, we're like, oh, elementary school, you want lunch? It's PB and J. I made a video about elementary school lunches and people were very surprised about how much nuts are in everything in the US. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, especially yeah. if you have, say, a soft play area where you've got multiple different Okay, groups that's of the kids. third time. What is a soft play area? It's a soft play. That area. sounds like something a bit sexual. Like, like not hard play, we're just just soft play. Eh? Like, so you have a ball pit. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> that does not help the soft play analogy, Heather. And so you, it's like a climbing frame, but okay. it's coated in like soft, um, like, so you can't whack your head on it. So it's kind of uh, surrounded by, I'm gonna have to find a picture of the like Is it like the Chuck E. Cheese thing I was describing where there's a ball pit, there's things to climb on with like a spongy yeah, and you've material. Got, often you have like nets so you can climb down yes. through different nets. Okay, yeah, soft play area. I've never called it that. I just called it the play place. Fair. I think that's because that's what McDonald's called it. Have, yeah. You'd have birthday parties with the soft play area and then once you've done playing, you move into like a hallway. Um, <laughs> hallway? <laughs> Man, oh, after the soft play area, next place we're going to is a hallway. Ooh! Got the good stuff on my birthday. Go another, you know? Oh, for my birthday, can I go to a hallway? So when it comes to birthdays, do you traditionally have that thing in which, you know, everyone's kind of innocuously just chatting in a corner and then the mom is left and you don't know what happened and then she comes out with the birthday cake and the lights are off and the lights are on and everyone starts singing? Happy yeah. birthday. And yeah. You just sing, sing the standard happy birthday song. Is there a non- There are some other happy birthday? happy birthday songs that if you go to certain venues, you have to sing because of copyright infringement. But at this point, I think the copyright has now finally run off. It's like a hundred year old copyright on the birthday song. But in the US, if you went to an establishment, let's just say you had your birthday at Applebee's. Yeah. Getting little sliders for your birthday. Well, they can't legally be caught singing happy birthday or else Applebee's will be sued by the copyright holder for using that song in their celebrations. And so we have, happy, happy birthday from Applebee's to you. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Hey. And they sing that to you. Yes, now as someone who worked at the Pizza Hut for five years, I also had to sing my own different variation of that. However, I thought it was dreadful. And so I just sang, happy, happy birthday from Pizza Hut to you. <laughs> And yeah, that was pretty much it. I'd also played on the ukulele though, because I was desperate for those tippy tips. Yeah, that which, makes sense. Which worked, sense. you know, I brought an instrument. Hell yeah. We do have sweet 16s now, oh. a little bit, because of the American influence, because- We have an influence. Culture. No um, quinceaneras yet or anything. It's the 15 year olds. It's like the Mexican tradition of sweet 15. Okay, never heard of that one. Okay. I don't like the practice that it's just some lavish giant party because yeah. yet again, I feel like it gets very classist where some girls are going to feel like, oh, my family can't afford to have sweet 16. Mm -hmm. Sad. My mom made all the cakes. Yeah. She made all the birthday cakes. I mean, she was a chef. when she I got chef. older, I would make my own birthday cake some years. That's depressing. Um, yet again, that's like the, the British one. culture of giving someone a cake. So giving yeah. someone a cake for your own birthday. You know, we even used to do it at secondary school. We used to bring in cake. Well, not bring in cake for ourselves. We used to bring in cake for other people actually at secondary school. So for we used to, birthday. no, for, for everyone else's birthday, we used to bring in cake for other oh, people's birthday. We only did so we did it the reverse way at um, secondary school. The teachers would let you bring in cakes for your, for your friends. Yeah. That's quite sweet, actually. But well, if you had any different traditions than the ones we've discussed here, please I'll leave a little comment below and we can chat about the most upvoted ones. Thank you very much to Heather for coming on the old YouTube channel. Where can people find you? <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> Love having guests on. I brought Ian on. He was just like, check out my sister. So anyway, uh, check out Heather's boyfriend. I'll leave a link to his stuff in the description. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching today's video. I will see you on the next one. 
goodbye. If you'd like to watch a previous British First American video, you can watch one of those here. In the meantime, I'm gonna serenade you. <laughs> I know how to play that, it seems. Not the Applebee's. They should call the English World Cup team after that childhood birthday party game. Sleeping lions, because they might as well be sleeping, they're so bad. It's not coming home, absolutely not. And if, if it is coming home, it's in a fucking napkin anyway.